Hey tubers, we're back at it. We're in the studio today. We're working on our, our nifty little mix cube. And we're gonna toot it up, do some EQing on it with Room EQ Wizard, programming it up with Sigma Studio, which runs on a PC only. Definitely a Mac guy. Stay tuned, let's make this thing sound great. All right, so one of the first things we're gonna do is just verify that Sigma Studio is actually talking to our chip. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna run a little bit of pink noise up, and then we'll just kind of, uh, you know, either tweak with the crossover or whatever, just to verify that, that we are indeed making adjustments in real time. So let's do that. All right, so success, we're actually talking to it. So from here, what we're gonna do is a screen record and we're gonna run up uh, Room EQ Wizard. And I'll, I'll show you that on a screen record. I got it on a different computer sitting here. Um, signal chain is we're running the reference mic right here through a Scarlett uh, 18i20. And that's our interface to get it into my iMac and that's what we're running uh, Room EQ Wizard on and then Sigma Studio being a PC thing is running on this crappy laptop with a even crappier monitor <laughs> but uh, good news is once we're done it's it's tuned and it's done so we don't have to worry about it too much from there. So let's run a couple of sweeps on this real quick Just to hear more level. All right, so we got a couple of good measurements going here. So from here, we'll we'll take a good look at those and kind of analyze what what we have as we move forward. Here, we're able to to make the proper adjustments and make sure we're not making too many mistakes. Uh, we'll be checking the phase, you know, just really looking at things super close. And this is all establishing a baseline on our cube. And then when we ultimately put it in its, its location on our, our mix area, we'll look at it one more time um, just to make sure that we're getting exactly what we want out of it. And in my opinion, that's super critical. And I, I can't imagine implementing a set of studio monitors into your environment and not testing them and making sure that, you know, they're not lying to you and that you're getting a good uh, response, so. All right, so here's our little whiz bang gizmo. Um, kind of what I was getting at. I think what we need to do is boost the HF a little bit. Oh yeah, we're gonna do some independent measurements. Hang tight, let me switch this over. Now this one should be low frequency only. Let's see if that's how this comes together here. Yes, okay. So let's, let's crack this down to just what matters here. All right, we'll add it back up here in just a second. Okay. There's LF only. And this should be HF only. Mm. Ah, looky there. Okay. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to mute those down a little bit. All right. So basically what I'm seeing here is that our net crossover is about 2.4. Not bad. I could definitely live with that. Um, I think we need to, we got our HF set at minus six. I think we need to boost that to zero on the crossover. So let me do that. All right, perfect. Now, so we got our mid-range to come together. Let's look at both. Let's get the full spectrum thing going on here. That's where we, we don't care about where we were. 
We're always moving forward here. All right, so we got the LF back in it here. Let's see where this goes. Oh, look at the little dippy dippy. What uh, what we've ended up learning here is that we probably need to work on some time alignment stuff because it went negative on us when we put the two together. Okay, we'll go to our most current one. Now let's flip the phase. Ooh, well, isn't that sexy? So now we've learned that it generally wants to be in phase. And it looks like, let me check the EQ and see if there's anything going on there. Let's check that. Well, so far everything is pretty subtractive there. I feel like we could maybe start about 10K and drop one off. Maybe a little bit below that. Maybe 9K. Let's do a little 9K EQ here and see what that does. Well, yeah, bingo. Always moving forward. Well, look at that. That's much better. So that was our 9K EQ. Let's see if we can drop one in at 6.18. Let's see if we can clean that up a little bit. Hmm. Well, I feel like I might have been slightly aggressive with that, but it's not too bad. 4K. Let me make sure I'm not cutting anything at 4K. Well then, looks like I can give that one back a little bit more even. Hmm. Well, it looks like maybe if I just drop the frequency a little bit, that'll make it more better. 3K, I think that's where we are. I need to drop it to 2.6. Kind of have to download that every time you run by an EQ for some reason. Oh man, <laughs> not winning here. Kind of just move things around. Well, I feel like we're better off than where we started. Should have been right here. Oh, yeah, much better. We're working on the blue line now, so that should sound pretty good. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Just finished tuning up our cubes. Uh, more than satisfactory, in my opinion. Uh, we've got a, a super flat response going. Uh, we're, we're within one or two dB from... Oh boy, from 80 hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz. So really, really good there. Um, <laughs> Sigma Studio is a kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, there's some other DSP interfaces that probably work better, but not at the price. Um, that $30 amp module with the DSP built in is really hard to beat, especially in a two-way scenario like this. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for uh, watching us go through this and uh, always appreciate uh, subscribers. So please subscribe, you know, hit the, hit the like button uh, and we'll be looking forward to the next one.